to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed.
is in Mubi, Adamawa State, blessing the people of God. Can we shout, Apostle, we love you. Apostle, we love you. Yeah. Yes. You know, I'm personally full of joy, very grateful to Apostle for his investment in my life. I sit down again and again to take stock. I look at my life year by year and I can trace where these things come from. I'm not confused about it. And I know that I'm not the only person with this kind of testimony. Yes, it is God, but he used the man. Thank you very much, Apostle, for your investment in my life and in the life of millions some that have never seen your face you laid down your life literally to ensure that we become all that God wants us to be and it's a thing of joy and a great privilege for me to stand here tonight and be a blessing to God's precious people please help me celebrate Pastor Jimmy and his dear wife
celebrate someone sitting close to you as you take your seat for a moment. Hallelujah. I want your heart to be open tonight because what you are about to hear may be the only ingredient remaining the explanation for the distance and the gap between you where you are currently and the grace the results that you so much desire i believe with all my heart that if you get the things that god is bringing your way tonight your life will change like day and night these things are not cunningly devised fables we didn't create them we discovered them he said stand in the way and ask for the old part which is the good part he didn't say create one he said ask for the old part you're not the first walking this road so find out those who walked this road how did they do it so week in week out our father by the mercy of god by the election of grace brings us these mysteries that can help us to fellowship with the mystery as Paul will say. And I believe tonight that God is bringing something very powerful our way. I've been instructed by our Father to teach on partakers of the grace. Amen. So I'll be teaching on partakers of the grace. In one minute, can you just pray, Lord, open my understanding. Give me understanding. Where you are seated, ask God Bible says, and he opened their understanding to understand scriptures. He opened their understanding. Lord, open our understanding tonight. In Jesus' name. Partakers of the grace. Apostle has defined grace in this place as any and everything or any and every reality that is made available only by God through Christ. He expanded the meaning of grace beyond just unmerited access or divine enablement, ability enabled by the Spirit to perform something. That is what we have always known over time. Yes, this is an aspect of grace, but that is limiting what grace actually is. In summary, he said grace is every good and perfect gift that comes from above. And then the interesting part of this definition is that it is a reality that can be made possible only by God, but can only be accessible in Christ. So it becomes grace, number one, because of the only the person who has the monopoly of the ability to make it happen, and that the means of receiving this thing has been streamlined to just one person, the Christ. Amen. So grace comes from God but reaches us through Christ and then he has also taught us in this place that in order for us to access the realities that are available to every one of us there are great and mighty promises things that pertain to life things that pertain to godliness that have been made available to us apostle teaches us that there are four levels of encounters that everybody must pass through before these things can become our experiential realities. And then the number one encounter he teaches us is an encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. It begins from there. Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 tells us, For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Verse 24. He said, being freely justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Freely justified by his grace. And that, that grace is accessible within the scope of the redemption that is available only in Christ Jesus. So, you cannot jump this level and go to other encounters. They are important, but they must happen in this order. An encounter with Jesus, the son of the living God. Then after that, the second encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. 
Because if all you have is just your salvation is important, is a total package. It has within it everything that is needed for your existence on earth and give you a space in eternity with God. But if that is all you have, you are going to be limited. Jesus himself speaking, he said, I still have many things to say unto you, but you can't bear them. It is my intention to deliver them. But I am leaving the responsibility of giving you access to all truth to another agency. Allos Paracletus, another of the same kind, the Holy Spirit. So that means that if I camp around just my salvation in Jesus, I will not be able to access the other things that Jesus was not able to communicate because they couldn't bear them. So the next encounter is an encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Then the third level of encounter or the third dimension of encounter is an encounter with the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom. I would have just said an encounter with the word, but I'm using the word mystery and secrets carefully. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 11. You know, before that time, Peter and the other disciples came and said, why do you speak to them in parable? And then he said, because to you, it has been given. It has been given to know to understand, to comprehend the mysteries of the kingdom. That means that the mysteries of the kingdom cannot be studied. <laughs> the mysteries of the kingdom cannot be read. Jesus said it has been given to you. Because the people that he was speaking to in parable, they were people that were called scribes. Scribes are people who were authorities in the Torah. Ezra was a scribe. That was why he was able to write the many parts of the Old Testament that he wrote. But Jesus is saying that you can be a scribe by graduating from a school. You can be a Pharisee by going through a Jewish theological system and then they endorse that you have learned this. But that system does not have within itself the capacity to make you understand mysteries. He said mysteries are given. And he said, we, the father in his own wisdom has decided to do a divine favoritism. He said, to you is being given. Unlearned men, he said, is being given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. He said, but to them is not given. And here their state, he said that in seeing they will not see. In hearing, they will not hear. And they will not understand lest they believe and be converted. So that means that there is something that your seeing, your hearing, and your understanding does to your change of mind. And it is when you change your mind that your life will change. So Jesus said, these people, they don't have a hope of their life being changed. Because the mysteries that can make their life change, the gateway to getting them has not been given to them. So when you come into Christ and you have come through Jesus and have met the Holy Spirit, the evidence of the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life is the level of mysteries that begin to be committed to you because he is the custodian of the secrets of God. The Bible says that no man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of that man. So in the same way, because the Holy Spirit is in your life, the things that used to be mysteries to you no longer are mysteries because the custodian of the mystery is now living inside you. Encounter with the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The fourth level of encounter. Now the church has done well with these three levels of encounter. We talk so much about Jesus we talk so much about the Holy Spirit. We are doing well about that. We even talk so much about the mysteries. But the limitation of the body of Christ currently, the limitation of the church currently, is because we have not understood the fourth level of encounter which I'm about to talk about. Which is an encounter with the body of Christ. You can know mysteries. You can know secrets. But if you have not met the body, you will be limited. An encounter with the body of Christ. In the book of Revelation 22, the very last book of the Bible, verse 17, John said, the spirit and the bride tells the word, tell the word, come. That means that if the spirit alone, although God tell the word to come, the word will not come. 
if the bride alone tell the word to come the word will not come so it is as far as the agenda of god on earth is concerned it is a partnership of the spirit first with the bride that can tell the word to come so if there is a possibility in god that we want to make material on the earth it will take the holy spirit partnering with the bride so that means that if i want a particular dimension of god in my life i have met the holy spirit i share a level of intimacy with him i know him he's my friend if i ignore the bride i can cry till tomorrow notwithstanding the presence of the holy spirit that reality will not happen the spirit and the bride says come can you give us first corinthians 12 13 let's establish this the spirit and the bride first corinthians chapter 12 verse 13 13 what what paul is saying here for by one spirit we are all baptized into what so that means when I came into Christ, I didn't just get born again ready to go to heaven. Paul says that is a baptism. The word baptism comes from the Greek word baptizo, an immersion. He said by the spirit. That means that one of the things, in fact, the primary thing the Holy Spirit does when he comes into the life of a person is to immerse the person into the body. He said, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And he said, it doesn't matter where you come from. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Whether we be bond or free. And have been all made to drink into, into one spirit. Encounter with the body of Christ. <laughs> Jesus let's look at the formation of the body because this is where a lot of people miss this now we take this kind of scriptures and some other things i'm going to share shortly and then we believe that all of us we have the same salvation from christ we have equal level of relationship with god and things like that that is a lie from the pit of hell <laughs> our salvation is equal but when it comes to the agenda of god it's not the same no no never lie to yourself that all men are equal all men are not equal we are baptized into the same body let's look at the formation of the body of christ the word formation is a very interesting word you hear it amongst the military when they are going to war they call it a formation the strategy the posture they should take who should pass where who should do what so that the victory can be won so there is an exact way the body was designed to function. If the body must be able to bring into experience the fullness of the things that Jesus died to make available to us, there is an exact formation. And that formation, it was Jesus himself that began to teach us. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 26 and verse 20. Verse 20, 26, 20. We'll read verse 20 and then we'll go to verse 26. Are we there? Now, when the even was come, he sat down with how many people? Were these the only people Jesus had at that time? There were 70. There was 120, isn't it? But when this meeting was going to hold, it was not a meeting with the 70. It was not a meeting with the 120, although they are his disciples. Bible says he sat down with the 12. He isolated every other person and called the 12 to an assembly. And then in verse 26, he did something. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread. Somebody say bread. And blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples, the 12. And said, you are seeing bread, but I'm giving you the body. Stay in verse 26. He said, take it. This is my body. Take it. This, what you are seeing in your hand that looks like what they baked, is my body. He broke it into 12. That means that each of them was committed a dimension of the body that should be his 
contribution to the overall victory of that body so that means that no matter how they rise in revelation their completeness is dependent on their interrelationship so peter can grow to the peak of his revelation but it's just one twelfth but that is not even where i am he said this is my body committed to 12 no other person was in that place is it it peter is no longer on earth john is no longer on earth bartholomew is no longer on earth james the son of alpheus is no longer on earth so who then is the custodian of this bread is it possible because joshua selman was not at that upper room <laughs> benihin was not there Young Gicho was not there. David Oyedekpa was not there. But Jesus did not keep a spare bread that others who are going to come should come and eat this one. He gave the whole bread to the twelve. That means there was nothing left for another person to take. So that means that everybody on earth now can be traced to one of the twelve. How then can I say I am equal with Peter? So that means when you look at the life of Joshua Selman and you trace it far enough, you may find him in John. <laughs> you will trace him far enough because this was the emblem of intimacy. The Bible says the disciples that put his head upon the chest of Jesus. Is it possible that that is the reason why no matter what apostle is preaching, he goes back to intimacy with the Holy Spirit? In John chapter 15, we are still introducing, just hold on small. In John chapter 15 and verse 1, Jesus said, I am the true vine. That means there is a false one. That means I'm not the only vine. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Verse 5, he said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He was still talking to the 12. This was the eve of his crucifixion. I am the vine ye are the branches let's look at the the way a tree looks for example you see the stem of the tree right and then you see branches that proceed from the stem and from that branch other branches proceed from that other branch other branches proceed so that means that the 12 were the immediate offshoot from the vine but every other person in different succession proceeded out of them this was jesus talking the formation of the body you know when we read john 15 they said jesus said i'm the vine you are the branches that is talking to all of us really no he was talking to 12 people we are branches of jesus but we are branches of jesus through other branches closer to jesus than us <laughs> you will be blessed tonight Ephesians chapter 4. Let's work something. Very popular scripture. Ephesians chapter 4. We'll work it from verse 3 to 7. And then we we'll jump to verse 11. Verse 11 is the very popular part of scripture, right? And he gave some apostles. Some prophets, right? And the likes. But let's go back a little. Go back to verse 1. Let's take it from verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called walk worthy of the responsibility whereunto you have been called verse 2 with all lowliness no argument no confusion no fight and meekness with long suffering forbearing one another in love verse 3 endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace verse 4 now watch this carefully there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling one body all of us are called into one body not two so with respect to the body we have been called into there is no superiority with respect to the spirit 
that we received no superiority with respect to the hope of our calling no superiority but go to verse 5 one lord so my lord Benny his lord joshua selman's lord is the same lord <laughs> one faith one baptism verse 6 one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all that is the end of equality verse 7 he said notwithstanding the fact that we share all of this in common he said but somebody say but but, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ we share everything the hope of our calling is the same the faith is the same the baptism is the same the Lord is the same the spirit is the same but when it comes to the distribution of grace is not the same can you give us verse 7 in the amplified verse 7 in the amplified is it possible <sighs> yet notwithstanding the oneness of the other parameters yet grace God's unmerited favor was given to each of us individually. Read what is in the bracket. Not indiscriminately. That means that when he was given the grace, he says, Sam, this is your own. Kenny, this is your own. Dan, this is your own. That means that what each and every one of them received is not the same. And the Bible says that is according to the measure in proportion to the measure of Christ's rich and bounteous gift. So he distributed grace. Although we are baptized into one body. Verse 11 now tells us the grace. Because verse 8 he began to explain. He that ascended is the one that descended. Verse 11 now. He said unto some he gave apostles. To some prophets. To some. Ah. Give us verse 11 in the King James. We are still introducing. <laughs> in the Amplified, sorry. Oh, Jesus. And his gifts were varied. He himself appointed and gave men to us. <laughs> and gave men to us, some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists some pastors and teachers his gifts were varied so paul is teaching us a very powerful lesson that we are one in christ but grace has separated us and that separation of grace is something that jesus himself did by his own wisdom so that means that the first step to benefiting from the ministry of the body is recognizing this truth so if you fight this you will never be blessed by the body do you now agree that we are not equal the spirit and the bride says come the spirit and the bride say come the formation of the body because it is the lack of understanding of this Paul tells us in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 he said for this cause Many are weak, many are sick, many sleep, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, arguing with this alone, he tells us that the consequence is weakness, the consequence is sickness, the consequence that sleep means death. For this cause, for this reason, many, many, many. Jesus, help us tonight. Help us tonight. You're changing everything in obedience to Christ. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the way? How can you run when you don't know the way of the Spirit? you fly when you don't know the way of the wind the power of what can you changing everything in obedience to God keys to power
partaking of the grace. We have seen the formation of the body. We have seen that the transparency, remember that grace is realities available, made available by God through Christ. And then we have seen that the transference of this possibility follows an organogram, which is the system, the formation of the body. So how then can I receive from the body? How can I partake of the grace? I'm going to begin sharing with us four keys, personal keys that God has taught me. And I believe that if you get these keys, I promised you earlier, it, your life will change like day and night. These keys are my testimonies. Four keys. Number one, discernment. <laughs> number one, key number one, discernment. Discernment talks about recognition. Discernment talks about ability to see beyond the surface. That I can see some now. And it doesn't have to be written on his forehead what kind of anointing he carries. But that I sustain an ability, a maturity in the spirit that although I'm not seeing some wearing suit and putting on tie, but I can discern, I can perceive that there is an anointing in this brother that can be a blessing to me. Discernment. Second Kings chapter 4. Very popular story of the woman we call the Shunammite woman. And then most times when we talk about the Shunammite woman, we talk about her giving, her benevolence, her ministry to the prophet, but something informed it. Second Kings chapter 4 from verse 5. From verse 8, sorry. Verse 8. And it fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where was a great woman and she constrained him to eat bread and so it was that as oft as he passed by he turned in thither to eat bread verse 9 and she said unto her husband behold now i perceive i perceive i can discern for her to use the word perceive that means it was not obvious i perceive that this is an holy man of God. In other words, her constraining Elisha to eat was not peculiar to Elisha. The woman probably was very good at being hospitable to people. And then she did this the first time, did it the second time and said, no, this one is not like any other person that we have shown hospitality. My husband, I perceive that this is an holy man of God. A version says this is a special prophet. I perceive that this is a special prophet. And then because of that, she pleaded with her husband and they built a house, a guest house, specifically for Elisha. And then the Bible says that one day Elisha came to that place and as he was sitting there, Elisha did not say, God told me to do something for this woman. He said, no, it is packaged within my office to change the story of this woman. Gehazi, come, call the Shunammite woman. And when the Shunammite woman came, Elisha said, what shall I do for you? In other words, name anything. If you want to overthrow Ahab, my anointing can make it happen. What shall I do for you? <laughs> Should I speak to the king? I've been wondering, was Elisha planning to go to the palace to speak for the, to the king? Or there was a way Elisha could speak from that room and the king will be compelled to move in a particular direction without knowing what is pushing him. The woman said, no. I hope you know that before Elisha said, should I speak to the king? He has seen that there is a need for favor from the king for the woman but the woman because that need had not been obvious at that time she said no i live in the midst of my people and then elisha said no i have to do something there has it what can we do for this one guys he said all the times we have been coming here i've never seen a child and her husband is old in other words it is biologically impossible elisha said guys you sit down Joe. you were not there when i received the mantle he said, call the Shunammite woman. By this time next year, according to the time of life, you shall carry your son. And the woman said, don't lie to me. He said, hey, hey, I don't need your faith to get this done. This one is the office of a prophet. Her 
can a man be this confident? And then, according to the word of Elijah, Elisha, the woman conceived and gave birth to a son. And the Bible says it came to pass on a particular day. Witches and wizards from wherever came. And the boy was with his father on the farm. The heir to their resources. And then he said, my head, my head. And the man said, send him to his mother. And the Bible said at exactly 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Not 11.59. Not 12.01. The pestilence that wastes at noonday. The boy fell down and died. And the woman said, I know how he came. Leave the boy on the bed. Give me a servant. I'm going to see Elisha. And then she wrote. Elisha said, wow, this woman is troubled and the Lord hid it from me. And when the woman spoke, Elisha said, there has been nothing happened. Elisha said, no, this one is serious. I will go myself. Now the woman's son came back to life. Miracle number two. As if that was not enough. In 2 Kings chapter 8, you know in chapter 7 there was a famine, right? Chapter 6, there was a famine that Elisha said by this time next year in chapter 7. But the Bible said in chapter 8 verse 1 when you read in the NIV that Elisha had told the woman that a famine will come. And the famine will last for seven years. The king did not have this information. It is only Elisha and this woman that knew that there will be a famine. And Elisha told the woman, just find somewhere and stay until the famine be over. And the Bible said that after the famine, the woman came back. But by the time the woman came back, remember, Elisha said, should I speak to the king? Because you are going to need the king. When the woman came back, her land, her properties were already taken possession by somebody else. And the woman went to the king to go and beg. But as the woman came there, the Bible says that Gehazi was sitting with the king and was telling the king the story of the woman and her son that was raised from the dead. And then the moment the woman came, Gehazi said, this is the woman whose son Elisha raised from the dead. Read verse 6 for me. Of, uh, give me verse 6 of 2 Kings chapter 8. The king asked the woman about it and she told him. Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, Give back everything that belonged to her, including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now should i speak to the king for you the woman rejected it but the word of the prophet cannot go back <laughs> discernment discernment how about lot bible says god asked abraham to leave his country and travel somewhere to a land he will show him bible says lot went with him and suddenly lot began to prosper but lot lacked discernment the bible says a time came that lot had men and abraham's had men the same head that he got on account of abraham he is fighting with abraham and abraham his uncle is telling him lot choose do you choose before an elder Choose and Lord said, hey, hey. the Bible says he chose Sodom. The very next chapter was when Sodom was born. Sodom was not born because they were sinful, Sodom was born because God had to kill the last installment of the blessings Lord got from Abraham. That was why God said, Don't take anything, don't look back. It was a beef between God and Lord. How dare you despise the channel that brought the blessing to you? It's a dangerous thing to receive a blessing and not know which anointing brought it. Which anointing brought it? Discernment. I like the example of Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 3, the Bible says Solomon offered a thousand bond offering and then God asked him, ask me anything. And Solomon, instead of asking, 
he suddenly discerned God does not have any covenant with me he has a covenant with David so if I can make God see that I am an offshoot of David whatever he had with David will find expression in me because there are certain things God spoke not concerning Solomon but concerning the seed of David so that means whoever qualifies to be the seed of David qualifies to receive what God promised that seed so I am going to begin by telling God I recognize that there is a special place David has and the Bible says the speech not what he asked the speech pleased the Lord discernment is very important that's number one number two no time I'll be rushing through these things but I'm praying that we understand number two genuine intentional connection to the grace not passive connection intentional genuine intentional connection to the grace write down these three words let's clear some of this confusion once and for all write down these three words father, mentor, pastor Father, mentor, pastor. Are they the same? We use them interchangeably most times. For many of us, this is the missing link. Father, mentor, pastor. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, for though ye have 10,000 instructors, the word instructor there is the word mentor, teacher, tutor, schoolmaster. You may have 10,000 instructors, and he said, All of them are in Christ, all of them are teaching you the mysteries of Christ. They are not liars, they are in Christ, anointed, graced. He said, But you do not have many fathers for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel the word begotten is a very interesting Greek word that means to regenerate you can see regen G-E-N-E I have regenerated you that means you were something by reason of my ministering the gospel to you something happened to you that reconfigured your gene so that the possibilities that come from you are not the natural possibilities anymore he said I am a father because I begot you he said you have many instructors now watch this some of us have put our two hands on father while others have put their two hands on mental i want to clear something this night a father is not a pastor a father can occupy the office of a pastor and can pastor you but a pastor because he's pastoring you does not mean he's your father because pastor is the word shepherd and the word shepherd is an agric word full animal animal husbandry do you call the full animal the father of the cows <laughs> his assignment is to tend for the cow he loves them no matter how close the full animal is to the cows they don't have his DNA coincidentally the biological children of the full animal may not even receive the care that the cows are receiving you see that but whether they receive the care or not they have his dna now this is where many of us miss it you are a son to a man of god and for many of us we glory in that apostle joshua selman my father until a father becomes a mentor you cannot become like him the gene 
only gives you a potential of becoming his result but his mentorship takes you through a tutelage that teaches you the principle a mentor is a role model a mentor is a standard a mentor is one you are willing to submit your mind to so that you can learn of him and become like him so it is one thing to be begotten by a father it's another thing to subject yourself to the principles of that father because when you were born you were born with his gene you were not born with his mindset his gene potentially carried the ability to produce that result his mindset experientially make the result happen so we have a lot of people following fathers but have not subjected themselves to the mentorship of that father genuine connection i'm not going to touch that so much maybe you can listen to my teaching spiritual tribe and fatherhood think we talked extensively on that so that we can touch the major things so your connection must be defined the scripture passage me loves so much Luke chapter 6 verse 40 that a disciple is not greater than his master when he is perfect when he has exhausted the curriculum he will become like his master so until a son goes through the school of his father as a mentor he can have the name that he's my father but he will never have the results so another person who is not as it were a spiritual son can be in lagos somewhere and hear about koinonia and begin to follow begin to pay attention to the teachings begin to pay attention to the principles and he's coming here to testify while the sons are clapping without results genuine connection <sighs> number three the first key is discernment right second is genuine connection genuine intentional connection to the grace number three before I take number three you know I learned so much about sonship and fatherhood from Bishop David Abuye one day I was listening to him and he said you take opinion from friends but you take instruction from fathers now it doesn't mean that when you want opinion you go to friends when you want instruction you go to father that's not what he's saying he's saying that if promise is my friend and kenny is my father and then i am thinking of where should i settle should i settle in zaria or go to kafanchan and then promise my friend says go to kafanchan Kenny, my father, says go to Kafanchan. Both of them said the same thing. Promise gave an opinion. Kenny gave an instruction. Both of them said the same thing. But one is an opinion. The other is an instruction. The difference is who said it. <laughs> so I can choose to take the opinion or not. But an instruction must. Must. Number three. We'll talk about that better here. Or not the career of the grace that you desire. We're talking about partaking from the grace. You have discerned, you have connected. The next thing is to honor. Honor. Brothers and sisters, honor can be seen. Honor is tangible. Honor is active. It is not passive. Honor is active. It's not passive. Honor can be seen. Honor is tangible. Honor can be received. Honor can be transferred. Honor is not something you assume. I know you honor me. I can see it. He didn't say honor the Lord. He said honor the Lord with. Honor the Lord with. Honor the career. Five ways we can communicate honor. Five ways we can communicate honor. Let's deal with this honor thing. The first way to communicate honor is not seed. The first way to communicate honor is not envelope. The first way to communicate honor is holding him in high esteem. Holding him in high esteem. That's not all. Alongside the willingness to defend and protect what he represents to the body of Christ. 
holding him in high esteem holding him in high esteem alongside the willingness to defend and protect what he represents to the body of Christ I didn't say what he represents to you what he represents remember we discerned what he represents to the body of Christ First Kings chapter 3 verse 6 give me the new King James Solomon again I love Solomon so much Bible calls him the wisest man before Christ so it's important to study Solomon look at this this was when Solomon was speaking to God and Solomon said you have shown great mercy to your servant David my father because please help me read from that because let's read together I want to go he walked before you in truth in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you is it true how about Bathsheba what about Uriah is that righteousness Solomon seemed to be lying here <laughs> ah. David saw a woman 2 Samuel chapter 11 called the woman slept with the woman he committed adultery that is spelled out in the Ten Commandments black and white and Solomon said David my father never sinned David my father never did anything wrong he said he walked before you in truth in righteousness and in uprightness of heart how about when he numbered the people and God was angry <laughs> Solomon is truly a wise man now if Solomon has said except for the adultery he would have disqualified himself from sitting on the throne because the mistake of David was what produced him so his ability to sanctify and justify David is what gives validity to his throne so and when he said that God did not say you are lying because in heaven listen brothers and sisters let's get this once and for all this anointings we are talking about is older than the vessel there was David the man carrying David the system <laughs> so David the man committed adultery David the system is blameless Because David was not the name of the son of Jesse. David is the name of the Christ. Beloved of the father. So because David was going to be an adumbration. According to the prophecy in Genesis 49. He said that unto thee shall the garden of your people be Judah. Until Shiloh comes. Isn't it? And then that Shiloh was going to be the Christ. But before the Christ there must be an earthly king. That Isaiah prophesied that he will sit upon the throne of his father David. And in Revelation 22, 16, he said, I am the root and the offspring. In other words, I produced David and I came out of David. So David is not, an, is not a mortal man. David the mortal man died and was buried. When you look at Jeremiah chapter 30, he said, and it shall come to pass, they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king because the prophet saw the beloved and he didn't know because Jesus has not been revealed so the closest person on earth that looks like the beloved was David so Solomon is saying Lord I'm talking to you about David the system not David the man and God said since you recognize David the system I will give you what I covenanted with David the system and part of my covenant with David the system is that he will have continuous victory over his enemies one he will have wealth and riches two his throne shall be established three I will give him peace four a lot of us are in a hurry to talk about this man of God did this this man of God did this this man of God did that you know, I've been disturbed for a long time about the thorn in the flesh of Paul. 
in the book of second corinthians he said because of the revelation that was given to me it was given me a thorn in my flesh the messenger of satan lest i be puffed up that means that that thorn in the flesh was a, a was a fighter against the revelation right so that means every time he wants to think about the greatness of his revelation there is something that thorn does to him that makes him unable to boast about that revelation that means that revelation cannot be sickness as many preachers told us that revelation cannot be his imprisonment as many preachers told us so i was concerned for a long time looking for what it was until i discovered the holy spirit showed me in the book of acts chapter 7 the bible says that stephen was speaking to the sahindrin and then a point came that stephen um said they i see the heavens open and then the son of man standing at the right hand of god and they said blasphemy now watch this when they said blasphemy and they tore their clothes they didn't start stoning him read your bible they didn't start stoning him because you cannot stone a man until a jury sentences that man to death so although what the man did is deserving of death you need somebody who is a jury to sentence that man to death lawyers am i communicating isn't it and Saul of Tarsus, a fresh graduate of law, was present. And the Bible says Saul consenting to his death. In other words, Saul was the person who gave the final approval that Stephen deserved to die. And then, when he gave the approval, they removed their clothes and put at his feet and killed Stephen, isn't it? Now, if you read the book the acts of the apostle you read the writings of peter and others there was none of the apostles that spoke about christ from a revelatory point of view peter spoke about him we were eyewitnesses of his majesty when he was transfigured before us but there is a more sure word of prophecy right john said the things which we have heard the things which we have seen the things which we have looked upon the things which we have handled that means that we proved these things even the book of revelation was a panoramic vision he saw the only person before paul that spoke about christ from a revelatory point of view was stephen he was the one who traced christ to adam so that means that the anointing that paul was going to walk in later Stephen was the progenitor of that anointing. So the person Paul sentenced to death was at, as it were his spiritual father. So every time he was walking in that anointing and then he wants to glory how that he brought certain mysteries. Satan, remember he said he's a messenger of Satan, the voice of condemnation. He said, but you killed Stephen. And then he said, I prayed to God three times. Don't make me remember. I did this in the days of my ignorance. And God said, I'm going to leave it there so that when you think about this, you will appreciate my grace that saved you. My grace is sufficient for you. Many of us have killed with our mouth we kill people simply because you do not have a connection with them now does not mean who knows whether the person you are criticizing is the next person on your ladder oh no oh no solomon said david did not sin and god said correct i and my wife we had an agreement long ago that Joshua Selman can never be wrong. I've been criticized for it. If he's wrong, I'm not God. I didn't call him. I'm not his judge. He can never be. <laughs> yeah. He can't. He can never. What did I say? <laughs> Joshua Selman, my father, can never be wrong does it mean i talk about others no what i don't understand i don't criticize who have you killed holding in high esteem that's number one right number the second way to communicate honor is serving genuinely service I think i'll dwell here a little time is far gone 
But let's see how we can run. Service. In the book of, I think, Second Chronicles chapter 25, the Bible spoke of a certain king called Amaziah, right? And the Bible says he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. So I can serve doing the right things, doing, participating in the worship team, or working in any department, and the Bible says that everything can be correct, and it will not be from a perfect heart. There is a man whose story has not ceased to surprise me. His name is Joab. Joab was one of the 400 men that came to David in the cave of Adullam. Joab is one of the, in fact, in the book of First Chronicles chapter 11, the Bible says that when the entire Israel made David king, that David said, whoever conquers Jerusalem will be the captain of the host. Verse 6 of First Chronicles 11. And the Bible says, Joab conquered Jerusalem and he became the captain. He became the commander of David's army. But do you know that when 2 Samuel 23 was given the chronicles of the mighty men of David, when 1 Chronicles was given the chronicles of the mighty men of David, Joab the commander, his name was omitted. If it was a mistake in Samuel, it should have been corrected in Chronicles. The Holy Spirit deleted Joab's name. His younger brothers, Asahel and Abishai, their names were mentioned. The worst part is his armor bearer. His name was mentioned, but Joab, no. <laughs> Joab, no. How can the man who led all the wars of David not be listed among the mighty men of David? I will show you shortly because. Joab was using David. He was not serving David. Joab was using David and the Holy Spirit was watching. Almost every instruction that David gave, he only obeyed the one that favored what he was looking for. Anyone that was against his personal desire, he violated. I gave you an example. The Bible said that David became king in Hebron, right? David became king in Hebron and then Abner came and there was a game between Abner. Abner was the captain of Saul's army and, and Joab. But after the whole game, Asahel, the younger brother of Joab started chasing Abner to kill Abner. Imagine a, a lieutenant in the army chasing a general. And then as he was chasing, he was following after him. Abner said, Asahel, turn back. Follow any of the men that are your equal. Leave me. I don't want to kill you. I've been a veteran of war for a long time. I was with Saul when he died. I didn't die. Leave me. I don't want to kill you. What will I tell Joab, your brother? But Asahel wanted to make a name. And the Bible says, casually, Abner just struck him and he died now it was told Joab that Asahel had died but after the whole thing Abner came to David and said we have been fighting this battle for too long but we can't fight any longer it is the will of God for you to be king over the entire Israel so I've surrendered the whole Israel will come to you and then when Joab came back and they told Joab that Abner was here Joab came to David and said what have you done imagine your boss just imagine me now looking at that person. Why did you... <laughs> I want to die. He just came and said, why did you do this? Don't you know that Abner came to spy? He was making it look like he was defending the interest of David. But he had a vendetta against Abner. And the Bible says, Joab left there and followed after Abner. Called Abner. And because Abner was unsuspecting, he killed Abner. Look at what David said. In 2 Samuel chapter 3, we read verse 29 and 39. Look at David's statement. Maybe let's read verse 39 because of time. 2 Samuel chapter 3 verse 39. Okay, let's read verse 29. Go back to verse 29. David said many things. Let it rest on the head of Joab. That is the, the guilt of killing Abner. And on his father's house. This was David's command, commander he's talking about. 
and let them never fail to be in the house of Joab one who has one discharge a discharge or is a leper who leans on the staff or falls by the sword or who lacks bread this is what David is saying about his lieutenant go to verse 39 <laughs> and I am weak today though anointed king and these men the sons of Zeruiah are too harsh for me they are too harsh this is the king talking a version says they are beyond my control do you know one other reason why Joab killed Abner? He suspected that David was going to replace him. He did the same thing to Amasa. When he saw that David was thinking of replacing him with Amasa, he killed Amasa. When Absalom, go to chapter 18 of 2 Samuel, verse 5. When Absalom rebelled against David, in verse 5 of chapter 18, 2 Samuel, the Bible says that David gave a charge to Joab, to Abishai and to Itai, the three captains of the host, and said, Deal carefully with the young man Absalom, right? And the Bible says he gave the charge in the presence of all the people. But look at verse 10. Absalom was trying to run away, then he got stuck in an oak tree. Verse 10. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab and said I just saw Absalom hanging in a terebinth tree yes verse 11 so Joab said to the man who told him you just saw him and why did you not strike him there to the ground I would have given you 10 shekels of silver and a belt hold on why was Joab saying this because Absalom was calling Joab so that he can send Joab to the king because the king refused to see him for two, uh, two years. And because Joab refused to come, Absalom's men set Joab's farm on fire. So it was an opportunity for revenge. It looked like it was David he was defending, but he had the beef with Absalom. <laughs> Look at, so I would have given you 10 shekels and all of that. Verse 12, hear the response of that guy. But the man said to Joab, though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand I will not raise my hand against the king's son why for in our hearing the king commanded you and Abishai and it I saying beware lest anyone touch the young man Absalom the next verse the Bible says that Joab carried some javelins threw it at him and ten of his men came and slew the young man he always went against the instruction. Do you now see why the Holy Spirit said he is not qualified to be listed? Eternally erased. All his years, 40 years of running with David wasted because although he served, the shocking part was in 1 Kings chapter 2 when David was about to die. David told Solomon that Solomon should ensure that Abner does not reach his grave in good old age. How can a man Second Kings chapter 2 from verse 5. He said, ensure that his gray hair does not reach the grave. Kill him. Serving genuinely. Let me ask you a question. Are you serving the grace or you are using the grace? Is there another thing you are achieving and you believe that leveraging upon the grace that you claim to submit to will make you reach it faster or genuinely from the depth of your heart you are holding up the hands of the man of God to ensure that his assignment is complete serving genuinely for oh, Jesus Amen third way to communicate honor or just run through these ones absolute submission very important absolute submission and the willingness to obey any and every instruction I've explained it before but let's write it for the purpose of emphasis absolute submission and the willingness to obey any and every instruction you don't argue with your father you don't argue see God will not punish you for obeying your father he will punish your father for misleading you 
If apostle tells me I want to go to where, maybe I want to go to overflow too. And apostle tells me that this is the road. Okay? Because I obeyed him, the mercy of God will carry the road and put it here so that I can pass and get to overflow too. But when that is done, he's going to summon apostle. Was that the road? I've gotten my results. But he's facing the question. So it's none of my duty. My assignment is to vet that this man supervising my growth has a connection with the Christ and also has that willingness to obey every instruction given to him by Christ. Hebrews 11 verse 17. He said, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. For the watch for your souls as they that must give account. Let them do it with joy and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. So when they report to God with grief, I've been talking to Sam. Sam is not listening. The Bible says it's unprofitable for you. It communicates honor because of quality. You are bringing a seat to a person and you are squeezing into his hand as if he's a policeman collecting uh, 20 naira on the road. That's not honor. As if you are bribing him. No. If you want to give seat, be intentional about it from your house. Get an envelope. Package it neatly. Even if it's 100 naira, package it neatly. The honor is what brings the result, not the quantity. Look at what God said in Malachi 1 verse 6. He said, a son honored the father, a servant his master. If I be your honor, where, if I be your father, where is my honor? If I be your master, where is my fear? And he was not saying that because the people were not giving. He said, you bring the blind for offering. Give it to your governor. Will he respect your person? God is saying that you bring, but the quality is questionable. Quality. Number five, the fifth way to communicate honor. Develop a system that constantly reminds you of the first thing that attracted you to that grace. Develop a system that constantly reminds you of the first thing that attracted you to the grace. Because the closer you get, the more you are exposed to the humanity of the career of the grace. You will suddenly know for some of us that came from far, when you heard about Joshua Selman, you think he's not a human being, he's a God. But there is a way you can become so close that you may forget what attracted you. So you must develop a system by yourself that will constantly define the boundary. No matter how close you get, you remind yourself that the less is blessed of the better. And consistently tell yourself, I am the lesser, he is the better. Don't assume it because you'll be surprised. <laughs> you will be surprised. That's the fifth way. And it's just number three we discussed. Number four now so that we pray. The five things we discussed now are ways of communicating honor. But that is the third key to connecting, to partaking of grace. So the last key to partaking of grace now then we'll pray. Jesus help us. Help us. Help us so that our life will not just be a mirage compared to the grace we claim to submit to. Jesus told them, if ye be sons of Abraham, do the works, produce the results of Abraham. Those guys were Jews. They descended from Abraham biologically. But Jesus is saying that all you have to show for your descent from Abraham is just the lineage. You don't have the results. And the results only come when you understand these things. If ye be sons of Abraham, produce the results. Herein shall the Father be glorified that you produce much results. Apostle's life is not barren of results. Probably any grace you are submitting to anywhere may not be barren of results, but are you producing that result? Amen. The last key, the last key, tenacious pursuit of the grace. Ah. Tenacious pursuit of the grace. I hope you know that Elisha was not the first servant of Elijah. Elisha was not there at Mount Carmel 
when Elijah brought fire. In fact, the only miracle Elijah did that Elisha saw was when he called fire to kill the soldiers that wanted to arrest him, which was about the last. The servant that went to check the cloud rising from the river, from the sea, was not Elisha. The servant that was with him in all his exploits, I don't know how many years Elijah was a prophet. We don't know his name. First Kings chapter 19, verse 3. Bible says that Jezebel sent a message to Elijah and said that I'm going to kill you by this time tomorrow. And then Elijah ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. That means it has always been the character of Elijah to dissuade his followers. He left his servant there. He said, servant, stay here. And the servant said, yes, sir. And stayed. And that was the end of his life. <laughs> the end of his life. But not Elisha. Ah. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 1. And the Bible says they were gone to Gilgal. And it came to pass that the Lord... Do you know that after this verse 3 of First Kings 19, the moment Elijah left the servant... He went a little and then he sat under a juniper tree, right? And then an angel brought food for him. Brought food again. From that place, Elijah went to Horeb, the mount of God. So the servant would have followed Elijah to Horeb, the mount of God. It was at Horeb that God said, Anoint Azael, king over Syria. Anoint Jehu, king over Samaria. Anoint Elisha the son of Shaphat as a prophet in your place. What about the servant that was left? Probably, even if God didn't want the servant to get something, his presence there would have compelled God. This guy has followed too much. Let me not leave him like that. But stay here. He stayed. Me? I will not stay. No. I will not stay. I will not stay. This is why I can be walking in Joss and live in Zaria. Yes, it's worth it. Yes. I've made the covenant with myself that every grace available in Apostle's life, I will walk in them. It's only a function of time. Yeah. He said, do to the sons as you did to the father. It is God's intention. I can't be a shadow of him. No. No. There's a possibility that came through Christ. From Christ through him. And he's not supposed to stop with him. He's supposed to get to his sons. And the sons will pass it down to other sons. That's how God designed it. I can't rob the next generation of this grace because of my disalignment. No, I'm not paying the price for myself alone. I'm paying for as many that God will connect to my grace. Why should I rob them? What explanation am I going to give them? Look at Elisha. In chapter 2 of First Kings, Second Kings, verse 1, it says, Stay here. The Lord has asked me to go to Bethel. Elisha said, My name is not that servant. Surely, as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. Let's go. Whatever it is, if there's no room, I'll sleep outside. Then they came to Bethel. Now, Elisha was not the only person that knew Elijah was going. The sons of the prophet in Bethel, they say, ha, 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 Elisha, do you know the Lord is going to take your master from your head today? He said, I know, hold your peace. And then Elijah said, the Lord has asked me to go to Jericho. Stay here. He said, no. Surely, as the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. I will go with you. Then they went to Jericho. In Jericho, stay here. The Lord has asked me to go to Jordan. He said, no way, we are going. And then they came to Jordan. Bible says Elijah parted the Jordan. And the moment they crossed, he said, you have passed the test. You are not the first person who wrote this test. A servant wrote it before and failed. I put you through the same test. You didn't fail. Now that you have passed, it's time for me to give you. I know what I should give you. But I want to know if you know what you want to receive. Ask me anything before I am taken away from you. And he said... I am not thinking about it now. I thought about it long ago. I'm not looking for your power. I'm not looking for miracles. I know that this body 
is only a house holding something I want a double portion of your spirit he didn't ask for a double portion of his power he said the spirit that ancient mystery responsible for your result I don't just want it I want it times two a double portion of your spirit and Elijah said you have asked a very hard thing because it is my power I can impart it <laughs> if it's my healing anointing I can impart it if it's the prophetic I can impart it but my spirit is not within my control it's not within my control it is God that can only determine who gets of my spirit because even me I can't even explain how I got it he said but I show you a secret if you can discern me if you can discern me because my spirit is to transfer from a father to a son not a master to a servant ah. my spirit ah. my spirit is like a spiritual DNA you don't transfer it to a mentee you don't transfer it to a flock you don't transfer it to a church member you transfer it to a son if you can discern me in that office and the moment the chariot appeared he said I've seen you not as my master but my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof Elijah did not even answer because he was not talking to Elijah and the Bible says that the mantle of Elijah fell down and Elisha tore his own mantle and picked up this mantle and then on his way back please help them on his way back the same Jordan that confronted Elijah when they were coming confronted Elisha and Elisha thought that the anointing was in the mantle so he struck the river the river was looking at him he said where is now the God of Elijah because Elijah has gone I have stepped into his shoes the same way you responded to Elijah you should respond to me and the Bible says Jordan parted hither and thither and Elijah walked through it tenacity for many of you hearing my voice tonight you have passed through all the processes you have discerned you have connected you have honored you have been tenacious it's now for you to receive Shaketo Kappa lift your voice and pray Shalabran Deko Sikata overflow two and three be ready from this afternoon I kept seeing mantles hovering over that overflow two and three mantles because the Lord told me that there will be such a visitation of the spirit of just men distributing ancient mantles shaketo ketakalapataya Lift your voice and cry out. Just pray in tongues, there is no time. There were predicaments in Israel until I, Deborah, arose a mother in Israel. Shaketo Ketakata. Where are the Deborahs in this place? Lambra Teko Sika. Shekete. Pralan Teko Sikata. Where are the Deborahs? I call you by an apostolic voice. Arise. Shaketo Sikata. If you can see me. Can discern me. Shan deke se kapa.
just lift your hands and cry out Descend tonight upon God's servant in this place there is a strange apostolic mantle for miracle signs and wonders strange apostolic mantle for healing creative dimension of the prophetic the mantle of favor is upon him the mantle of honor is upon him the wisdom of the ancient is upon him which one do you want if you can discern Then we'll pray again. Jesus, there is fire in this place. <laughs> the Lord is asking me to comfort someone. This is the last push that you need. You have done every other thing. It's time for you to dive into that anointing. Many of you have experienced the ankle level. Many have experienced the knee level. Many have experienced the waist level. It's time for you to swim in that anointing apostolic dimensions i activate apostolic dimensions do unto the souls as you did to the fathers as i have received i pass it on
Verse 39, bring them out. Those under the anointing, if you can, just bring them. Our Father has taught us a mystery. Let them receive the full dose. There is a pool in this place. There's a literal pool in this place. It's like a fountain that I'm seeing. Springing forth. It's like a fountain. And this all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Verse 40. Verse 40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they, without us, they, Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, Paul, Peter, James, Stephen, they without us, they without us, we are the finishing touch of the things they represent. They without us should not be made perfect. Jean Deke Deke Deke. They without us. Hold on. They without us should not be made perfect. Chapter 12, verse 1. For this reason, because they need us to finish well, for them to be made perfect, they now became part of the cloud of witness. So when Joshua Selman stands to minister, Elijah cannot sit down because he is being perfected, he is dependent on Joshua Selman's doing well. So when I stand to minister, then the host of might have gone to be with the Lord. But he cannot see. sit down. He cannot sit down. Because they, without us, say we're for sin, we also. Brothers and sisters, you might be 25. You might be 35. You might even be 10 years old. But the mystery inside you is as old as God is. It's older than you. If you limit yourself by your age, you would have cheated yourself. So, you standing here right now the saints that represent the dimension that you are now walking in they are watching and are saying promise there is something that helped us to succeed we are passing it on to you it comes can mantle please help them so they don't enjoy themselves lord whose mantle have you destined me to walk in Our time is gone. Lift your hands. There's someone at the back. Ah, what is it about this prophetic anointing? Around the side where ushers and peers stand, there is someone in that place. I'm seeing a sword in the spirit. And that sword is like it has been put in fire, red hot. And that sword is coming into that person's mouth. And it will do something to your throat and will change your utterance by the spirit. Where is that person? Bring the person out. Jean de Cosicata. Langadakata. Bring them, bring them, bring them. For the Lord has given us the tongue of the learned. Jeketekete. I'm seeing seven people in the spirit that you are going to feel like fire burning both of your ears like fire burning the two ears the Lord is about to hear open your ears to hear the utterance of the spirit who are there oh God I don't know who they are at the count of seven recognize them one two three four five six seven take it shake it take it there is a lady I don't know which whether in the main auditorium or in the overflows is not given me to know but the Lord is telling me that the threefold anointing that were upon Catherine Kuhlman, Amy Semple McPherson, 
and Maria would what eat her. A combination of the three is coming upon you. Shate Kata. Receive it now. A combination of the three. Shaban Tekete. Shete Kosikata. A combination of the three. A combination of the three. There is a lady number for one towards the front. Sit number one, two, three, four. To the left side. Shakante Kosikata. Take it now. Pralan Tekete. Zente Koshika. of grace upon the middle belt Koki state Benue state Plateau state Nasarawa state Shake toke palakataya Shenteke sakata The middle belt The middle belt I am seeing like lightnings Shako saketa Lenge tekate The middle belt Take it now I activate it now Help that lady, please. Help her. Especially. The middle belt. Especially if you are from the Kogi Axis. The Kogi Axis. Listen. There is a natural spiritual deposit of the apostolic and prophetic mantle upon this region. This is why their herbalists are powerful. Because they navigated through another means to activate these prophetic realities. But we are taking them back. We are taking them back. Prophets are rising from that region. Apostles are rising from that region. I'm seeing Anna the prophetess. Woman of intercession in the spirit. I'm seeing Anna the prophetess. The one that prayed the birth of the Christ. That mantle is coming upon many people. Shaka Tokata. I'm seeing that up to 70 people are taking that mantle. Anna the prophetess. Let it rest upon you now. Oh. In the name of Jesus I'm rounding up now But just lift your hands wherever you are The Lord is asking me to release The spirit of revelation such as I have, I give unto you. I know how it came. I've taught you how it came. So it can be transferred. Don't think that everything you heard came from just studies. There is an exact anointing for revelation. It's at work in the life of my father and I have caught it. It's not humility to say I don't have it. 
said for a long time Israel has been without God without a teaching priest and without law I'm about to call forth teaching priests men of mighty revelation not just men that know scriptures men with the spirit of revelation Jean de Cossicata, as it was upon Paul as it is upon Joshua Selman for a long time let the teaching priest arise I call for the teaching priest I call for the teaching priest arise I sound the shofar in the spirit let the teaching priest hear the alarm and arise Marketo Sekata Sean Dekete Shalabam Deko Sukata Shalabam Deko Sukata There is fire in this place Fire of the please come. That young man is in his hand. Please come. Come. Yes, come. Shala Prante Kosikata. Where are you from? Eh? Ebony State. I'm seeing a crown upon your head. And I'm seeing that the Lord is giving you discernment. I'm seeing that there is an activation of the gift of the Spirit. This discernment is not the gift of discerning of spirits. It is a function of growth. But there is something, I don't know why the Lord is giving you. But the Lord is giving you that gift. That you may discern between good and evil. When I was explaining that discernment aspect, it was the greatest cry of your heart. And the Lord is asking me to release it to you. Are you ready to receive it? Take it now. Take it now. In the name of Jesus. Take it now. Yes. Take it. Take it. I'm seeing like an injection. It's coming upon your, le your, your left shoulder. It's like an injection. It's passing from your shoulder gently down to your feet. It's like something hot, something cold. But there is discernment coming upon you. It's a crown upon your head, but there is an injection. What he says to one, he says to all. You can receive it for yourself. Take it now in the name of Jesus. There is no time. My assignment tonight is not necessarily to release what I have. My assignment is to show you what is obtainable that you might take on it. That's my duty. My duty. My duty. My duty. There are five members of the worship team because I'm seeing a connection with 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse 13. Bible says, while the minstrel played, while the minstrel played, the word of the Lord came. I've been saying this again and again, that the Lord is restoring a combination of the worship stream and the prophetic anointing. It was only David that walked into to do it. We know him as the psalmist, but he was also a prophet. A combination of the prophetic and the worship streets. They call them the tabernacle, the restorers of the tabernacle of David. I'm seeing like five members of the worship team. It's coming upon you. I release it now. It is upon our Father. So it should rest upon you. Take it now. Five of you. Receive it now. Shalabran de Kosikata. Lembreto Sikatoshka. The Lord is showing me someone in the main auditorium here that your eyes just got open and you saw an elderly man standing in front of you. And instantly your spirit told you that this is Abraham. That person, there is a dimension of prosperity that is about to be given to you. I don't know who the person is. Jacket or Sikata. He said, Look unto Abraham, your father, 
unto Sarah who bore you alone I called him and I increased him take it now help them the mantle for wealth and prosperity Jean Decate I'm seeing someone in overflow three and I'm hearing the name Deborah it may not be your name but the ancient apostolic mantle upon Deborah that made her a prophetess a judge a wife and a mother and she had a balanced life I command it let that man to rest upon you now receive it thank you Jesus our time is fast spent there's so much the Lord is doing but I believe he's not going to stop here some of you your sleep this night will be filled with strange encounters strange encounters I'm seeing something very strange as I just stood here the Lord opened my eyes Apostle is in Mubi ministering in a crusade but I perceive that the angel of his assignment is standing on this stage just lift your hands and remain silent I'm not going to say anything I don't have an instruction to pray just lift your hands and remain like that he sent and signified by his angel I'm seeing that angel moving from the extreme right the extreme right and he's going towards the back he's going towards the back he's going towards the back and he's going this way yes mighty angel this is the revelation of Jesus Christ he's unveiling which the Lord gave him to reveal unto his servant Joshua Selman he sent and signified it by his angel I'm seeing the angel of the Lord's presence Utaji Utaji I'm seeing him standing in your front and that anointing is resting upon you is a strange apostolic strength anointing is coming upon you, he's still standing there. Jean de Cosicatosha Langato Seca Pralacataya. I'm trying to stop, but I'm seeing him. Pastor Lawrence, I see him with a jar of oil, and he's standing in front of you. It's the same thing that he's doing to you that is happening to Pastor Jimmy's wife. It's a jar of oil, pure as crystal. And he's still holding it. I'm still watching. And now, at the count of three, he will lower the jar of oil and pour it on your head. One, two, three. Jean de Cosicapa. Shakampa. David Dam, the same thing is happening to you. The same thing is happening to you. Shakes, receive it. It's coming upon you. Shaketo, promise, take it. Like a prakato sekata. Hold them like a time. Bragan de Cosicata. Jean de Cate. Jesus, we thank you. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? For he has done so very much for me. Narekele. Song. 
what the Lord is distributing is not just anointings. There are some of you that have been lashed by lack and poverty, yet you are a son to a man that is prosperous. Some of you have been buffeted with all manner of sicknesses, yet you are a son to a man that works in divine health. As we sing this song, whatever is in your life that cannot be found in the life of your father, with speed, it will disappear from your life. For some of you, you will see them literally walking out of your body. Dusty Michael, can you help me please? Shakato Sakata. Lembreto Sikata. Sing it with all your might. Poverty leaves. Sickness leaves. Oppression in the night. They leave you. Failure. They leave. Shaka Toka Palakata. unto you such as I have I give unto you there have been many funny cases of students writing exams how can somebody write 10 papers and pass only 2 is she that dull in the name of Jesus I declare the same angel that helps me academically Jean de Sukata. I permit him to help you beginning from this night he said I the Lord your God will hold your right hand saying unto you fear not I will help you I release that Lord, angel here in our midst let's hold hands everywhere inside and outside let's just connect as we pray in the spirit Make sure you are praying. Libros kada barakota shebretis kaliada barodos. Shabras kada balako shibriada bash. Are you praying? Those online, connect, connect and pray. Shabakota sada balakota prianda gadas. Zedebekatos kalabrianda dabush. 
thank you for your presence thank you for your grace Linda kapa sata paka prata ko sada baria da kato freske de balados. Jesus, we bless you. Manda kapa rosa da bako te shega de bela de bos. Shaka te para kata frata kata para da baka sada prada kada kada baka ta pras kada baluts. Shepros kapa ushata rakota sabredish kala baria da bagos. Jesus, we exalt you. The healer, the deliverer. Zebros kaparu shata kurianda katafras kada balada bos. The captain of our salvation, the one who can turn anything around. We bless you. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 is the Lord, is the Lord. God Almighty is the Lord God Almighty My life is full My life is full My life is full Hey, and the people say, Holy, Holy, and the people say, Holy, 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 and the people say, Holy, 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 is the Lord, is the Lord. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Prophesy to yourself. My life is full of your wonders. My life is full, yeah. My life is full. Full of your wisdom, my life is full of your Holy Spirit. We declare tonight that you have absolute unrestrained access to our spirits, to our minds, and to our bodies. For you are the one given to us by Jesus to help us understand the kingdom, to help us understand his power, to help us understand the majesty and the realities of the spirit. We thank you. We honor your presence. We honor your wisdom. Lord, I pray that tonight you will open us up again to the mysteries of the kingdom. May we encounter your power. May we encounter your light. Turn us into signs and wonders. Do this and bring glory to the Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Just two verses. And then we'll sit down. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul made a statement. He said, let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ, number one, and then he calls them stewards, custodians, 
a steward is one who has been trusted with something there are men that the bible calls stewards of the mysteries of god stewards like i give you a bible i say please hold it for me and every time they are looking for that bible they make reference to you because you have been made a steward in matthew 25 he made other stewards of his financial resources is that true so the bible says let a man please keep it there let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ but then much more than that that we are stewards of the mysteries of god verse 2 says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful faithful in what faithful in communicating those mysteries moreover it is required that if at any point by the grace of god you are made a steward of any dimension of the mysteries of god your assignment among other things is faithfulness to make sure that you continually communicate those mysteries until the people that god has committed to your care rise to the reality you see stewards are dispensers the, the whole idea is not for them to keep it it is that it flows to the people it's just that by the election of grace they are the communicators of this reality stewards of the mysteries of god not stewards of preaching brothers and sisters let me tell you the truth with all humility there are preachers but there are stewards of the mysteries of god are we together you know that a dimension of god was allocated to certain personalities and the bible encourages them to be faithful unbending ensuring that people enter that dimension i'd like you to open your mouth and cry to god in one minute and say lord the dimension of the mystery that has been committed i receive it i receive it i receive it are we praying lord we thank you and we accept with all humility the privilege of being stewards of the mysteries stewards of the mysteries the secrets of god hallelujah please sit down good evening everybody We're in for a serious time tonight. Just smile at someone close to you and say good evening. Are we together? Praise the Lord. It's always my joy to bring the word of the Lord. I remain faithful to this task. It's a grand grace in Jesus' name. I just want to specially appreciate Honorable. Honestly, it was a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. All the way from Adamawa State through Abuja and he gave us a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Thank you. John Terry from Adamawa State House of Assembly. God bless you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, we rise not just by desire, but how much light we have accessed and engaged not only accessed i used to say accessed alone but i found out that was not very accurate we rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available but how much light we have accessed and engaged you can access it meaning you are not in ignorance of its operation but not engage it you will not see anything we rise in this kingdom brothers and sisters on the strength of the light the illumination the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit but engaging it is the product of faith accessing the word is not faith it gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word i've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding obedience and courage 
understanding you cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably obedience the ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see are we together so may i remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom i desire to encounter the anointing wonderful but that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing i desire to encounter the spirit of revelation wonderful but that will not bring you into those dimensions i desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity wonderful but that will not bring it that way i desire to live long i desire to live strong i desire to be a leader i desire to be great our society is full of desire that's wonderful it's a good starting point except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything people desire to be anointed they desire to be blessed they desire to receive miracles they desire deliverance they desire healing but they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do no desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit when there is desire you will defy every excuse you will defy every consequence and pursue your pursuit gives you access your desire gives you the inner strength the tenacity the staying power to pursue information pursue light pursue an encounter are we together then if and when you have that encounter you have access to it now the next thing is to put your understanding to work to engage that truth you know the engaging part is where i truly believe that the church of the lord jesus christ has failed very well i have said it again and again that i don't believe the church of god is in ignorance necessarily by the grace of god the servants of god scattered around nigeria africa and the world have done well commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together yes we give that credit to all the pastors the prophets the apostles the teachers and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of christ bridging the ignorance that is in the body but the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access and we believe that the moment you find truth automatically it should produce result no sir no sir truth must be engaged engaged to produce this mic has great potential to amplify my voice so that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world but until this device is engaged accordingly not engage as you wish there is a pattern engage accordingly then it releases the full strength of it i can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but i can turn and live a very very hard life i have access to the mic but i have not engaged it accordingly is that true so please let us deliver ourselves from this this um, is a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage engaging is very important to engage means to put the, the word of god to work you engage it and stay there then it is at the point of engaging the word that god's integrity is committed there are many people when you teach on tithing they will help you finish the message but they don't engage it they don't do it they do it occasionally how about those who do not engage the power 
of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in acts chapter 4 the bible says that paul and um, peter and, and and john they were on their way to the temple and whilst they passed the beautiful gate the bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms and the bible says that he requested that they helped him you know like beggars would do and then peter looked at him and said silver and gold i do not have any but such as i have i give unto you in the name of jesus he said rise up and walk access but the man was there the bible never said he got up then the bible says peter help me pastor alpha peter held his hands and forced him to engage you see it is at the point of obedience that the power is released not when the word just comes this is the dynamics of results until the word of god is engaged with faith and understanding the word of god is as barren as whatever it is so the bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rest you see that at that point the bible says he leaping stood that guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone the power of god hovering around how about god genesis chapter one the bible says there was darkness from the hebrew word tohu wabohu darkness confusion and then the bible says the spirit of god the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around but no change happened until god said and god acted he engaged and said let there be light be light appear reappear and then there was that and he said it and he saw it believers are largely not in ignorance so while we seek to open the body of christ to greater frontiers of revelation i am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results you see the bible talks about a certain group of people it says they are ever learning is god blessing us already ever learning meaning that they have an appetite and that's supposed to be a good thing an appetite to explore let's go deeper wonderful let's go higher wonderful but the question is what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and sunday services wednesday prayer meetings many believers receive prophecies they receive words they study the bible they read books they have volumes and volumes of jottings access but they do not engage and so at the end of it they are disappointed they are angry at themselves and at god and they are almost tempted to say lord your word did not work and god says no 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 let's be fair show me what you did from january till now how many times did you tithe? say lord let's not talk about that one just did you bless me or not and god says look at it lord you didn't heal me from the pain and god said did you do what was told to do the day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise when the bible says rejoice in the lord how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it rejoicing not just as what you want to do but as a key to your breakthrough are we together engaging the word let me tell you something the bible says the kingdom of god that you have to become like a child do you know why um in our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious we don't want anybody violating on anything I, I, you know don't violate me i'm a citizen i'm intelligent i went to school we are so right conscious it's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of god's word 
are we together now the word of god declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome we argue we explain intellectually we bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity and god says well i'm not the one in need you're the one who is looking for the solution look how difficult we make it to get the anointing look how difficult we make it to be prosperous look how difficult we make it to rise look how difficult we make it to get the power of god let me tell you the truth the difficulty is that i think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word we dispense the word but at the end of it we do not leave our sermons with the action point the very point and that's where members don't like that's why we like prophecies a lot because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back i see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around and highest they check around and see um if there is an opportunity for a joke and they you know believers we're spiritually lazy not because we don't fast and we don't pray but that point of engaging the word one of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of bishop david oyedeko in my life is that among other things his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do good master the rich man said what must i do to be saved he wasn't saying can i save myself lord i know that it is within your character to partner with men where is my own part of the deal we hate this talk and you know the western world may god bless them we have received so much from them but i think that this this error of allowing god to do everything to show his sovereign claiming that and whether we add anything to it or not it cannot be done no brothers and sisters listen the bible says the heavens even the heaven of heavens is the lord he says but the earth has he given to the sons of men there will always be a cooperation a partnership between god and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory please learn this if anything is to change in your life it is not all up to god there is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light access to it and you engage it not access alone we have done pretty well in understanding it so as i dispense these truths by the grace of god alongside all the men and women of god scattered in this nation and around the world please i like us to make a commitment that we will not only be hearers will not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership your partnership with the word of god does not negate what god has done your partnership with the word of god is what makes it your experience until you partner with the word of god it remains a prophecy or a promise it is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony to your experience right from the foundations of the earth the lamb has been slain but the day you hand over your life to jesus that's the day salvation becomes your experience is that true the bible says by his stripes we are healed but the day you hear the word you receive it and engage appropriately the bible says again and again that the lord gives men power to prosper but this is not our experience for many of us in the body of christ the day we are willing to not only receive the precept but sustain the grace you see this is the, this is the true idea of grace i told you grace is like love grace has love has depth height that's how grace is there is a dimension of god's grace that is his unmerited favor 
or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now this is the dimension of the grace of god that the body of christ has not understood so he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinary would do then he will grant you grace so he supplies that grace are we together now yes if i prophesy to pastor alpha now i am operating a, i am doing the speaking it is willing he's not opening my mouth i'm opening my mouth by myself but i am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men that intelligence you call it the gift of the spirit you call it the prophetic is what the bible calls grace the power to do the power to do bless you sir are we together if we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know brothers and sisters i submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise the problem truly speaking is not ignorance i told you again and again and i'll continue to say it i do not believe the body of christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance there are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit there are still deeper dimensions that god will open us but you see the system of god is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first and that qualifies you to receive more the parable of the five two and one talent the bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship the one with five talents engaged correct the one with two talents engaged the one with one talent just buried it and left it there when the master came for accountability he said well um you were a hard man you like reaping where you don't sow so i i just thought instead of wasting my time i kept it on the guy can go and remove your thing collect your thing the bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents so you see increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension god has given you a pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming a man of god who will not engage diligently god gives you ten thousand naira you mismanage it carelessly you do not find out the principles of god there's nothing in it for god there is no system of accountability and wise use of it you can't sit down and be mesmerizing on 1 million 10 million god does not work like that are we together how about anointings there are men of god who admire their whole assignment is more power and god says calm down the grace i've given you is enough to save souls even if it can't heal sick bodies now show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access and say lord what is salvation anybody can do it then god grants you the grace for intercession and he said lord that one is too hard i need power direct raw power to just prophesy or lay hands and god says no you'll never work that way never work that way god is revealing to us as simple as what i'm sharing is god is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change it's not because the word of god has failed it is because we seldom engage the word we complain we receive the word let me tell you what most of us do you know when when people complain about certain areas i ask them have you listened to this my teaching before i finish they smile and the person is not getting the result and he will listen now he say ah, have you listened to um, um 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 evidence of genuine intimacy they help you finish it and you look at this guy and you know that this guy doesn't know god for sure are we together now yes then you tell him go and listen to it and he plays around while he's just listening distracted doing a lot of things gisting with friends and then catching up and then he tells you sir i just finished 
there are there are certain teachings one hour teaching but i finish them in three days one hour teaching in three days because every five five minutes i'm stopping jesus something just entered my spirit i see i was studying something there and i almost jumped i almost jumped from my bed i said yeah yeah what is this he said i've not read this bible before i had to look at it again i found my bible drilled the thing again i don't know what i caught years ago that made me draw it but that ink was already fading i drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation what this is the bible opened up another light for me you finish a three hours message you never pause <laughs> to listen to learn even when something is very powerful you are just saying, wow just continue even the way you study in school brothers and sisters that's not how you do well you pause the psalmist will say sila pause ponder think write if need be pray if need be hallelujah if you don't like what i'm saying forget about results god is not a herbalist hallelujah yes. look at the aspects of your life you will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance but you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge truthfully speaking you already know what to do and the grace has been supplied but that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest that's what causes a lot of trouble what do you have in your house nothing except a cruise of oil and the prophet said that's it madam this is what i want you to do go why didn't the prophet prophesy vessels find your way to this poor woman's house say madam carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction close your door she would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one is god speaking to us yeah and he said close the door when you close the door start engaging the oil the oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle but when engaged and the bible says she kept pouring and the oil kept multiplying how about the widow in zarephath when the prophet came he said woman how are you fine sir water please ah I don't have much but i'm a generous woman and just bake the remaining bread for me say we're about to eat with my son to die he said madam i'm i'm here not because i'm hungry i'm here so that you will survive so just handle this treasure is in eating vessels you better quickly come and feed me first the woman would have said you are such a heartless and stupid man you are the prophet they've been talking about you are a wicked man i would make sure i tell all those who have you are ah, ah you see me and a child you don't even love women and start another funny women movement and say look there are prophets who don't they collect things from women and the bible says that she her engaging that thing all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower i'm showing you how this works how about three days they spent three days on the mountain and then the people said these guys are hungry there will be commotion here now and jesus said feed them said, ah, feed them even a year's worth of food no miracle could happen until there there was something from men and andrew found a young boy and carried his bread his, his lunch box as they call it and all of a sudden jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication who taught you that things happen by themselves it is the dynamics of the workings in terms of god's part that is none of your business the bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child nor the way of the wind that's how you cannot tell the work of god there is a part of this equation that you can never know it is sponsored by the wisdom of god for instance how your destiny helper will come is not your business your own is to engage what brings them your destiny helper can be a donkey 
a donkey needs to be missing for you to find Samuel. Doesn't matter. You think if God asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing, will he choose the, the disappearance of a donkey? Leave the acting to God. Your own is obey to the latter. And then you will watch God use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing. Let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes. When we want to know how the details. How will I pay my rent? Lord, I know you are faithful, but let's, let's be honest here. And God is saying me, you are telling me to be honest? <laughs> Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes. So we don't engage the word at all. At all. Master, if it be thou, bid me come. And Jesus said, really? You want to see a new dimension? I've given you a word. Engage it. Come. All of them stood and said, oh yeah. He didn't say, Peter, come. He just said, come. Whoever walked. He said, come. And all of a sudden, Peter got up and walked and it was it it was surprising peter i'm walking and he was laughing and all of a sudden he was about sinking many people see the sinking part they don't see the part that jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by jesus himself if peter sank jesus would be to blame after all jesus knew he was learning he said come obey him and perish and watch whether you will perish listen learn this i'm teaching you how faith works peter he held him and said no if you walked on your own like jonah jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience so the whale swallowed him what bailed jonah out was mercy Are we together? These are the systems of the kingdom. This is how it works. Guys, go and preach in my name. Heal the sick. Cast out devils. And Jesus, ah, Jesus, won't you go with us? Say, no, no, no. Just go. I've given you my name. Say, where is it? Say, just believe. Keep going. And when they met the first sick person, um, my name is sir you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock peter said this thing is working let's do it again they returned back to jesus and said hi jesus even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name and jesus said that those are little issues let's talk about don't rejoice because of that be honest with yourself tonight is it really that god has not been faithful or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say god is not anointing me what do you think the anointing is not a charm you eat anything anywhere anyhow anytime no sir no sir how about breakthrough there are many of us that want breakthrough you hear people the fact that god is doing it to one person that per you see do you know why we allow testimonies the most important part of testimonies is not the result is the bridge between the problem and the solution what did the person do that's what your spirit should be sensitive about for many of us we wait till the end of it then we say wow you mean it this is how i live my life i don't sit down and tell god lord create the changes i say no lord i know i give you all the praise show me my own part and i stand up and start engaging it start engaging it start engaging it what of our family members oh god will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change 
husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change and god says listen when it comes to this thing you can't help yourself it is by a prophet that the lord brought them out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved even if you are a midwife when you are about to give birth you need another midwife to help you that you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself listen to this and understand there are systems in the kingdom a time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. is God helping us so so many people arrogantly sit down and say what is there is it not man of god man is it not the same jesus that died for us and they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment how long please help me how long listen i think it was in it was in mina over the weekend we were preaching for um bishop it was it was such a an awesome time with him and uh, bishop achaya and i was sharing there i said every anointing listen to me every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it that you are anointed is not generic in results the anointing is levels when your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you you're already in trouble there are three ways to come out of that thing grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust god for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem brothers and sisters in my little life i've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone but i've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing it will rubbish you as if you have never met god believe what i'm teaching you if the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged this family now will get up and say okay we have read in the bible and let me tell you what happens they begin to pray at least it's a starting point while they pray the holy ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said study the life of saul of kish do everything they did and so they start studying a donkey was missing we for us an animal was not missing let me show you how the, the holy spirit helps people what is missing joy peace love breakthrough finances spiritual upliftment what did they do they started moving around and a servant said let's go and meet a man of god and the holy spirit says go and do likewise and they stand up and the holy spirit now tells them look there's a miracle service coming you see the word of god is becoming alive you are acting you can sit down at home and say god has brought it he said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flimsy excuses it is raining i'm not very happy i didn't eat well we were not joyful yesterday those things are the ways demon spirits keep people but when you stand up as you are walking to come heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle now while you are coming you are not even sure you will meet me but you are coming anyway while you are coming you are not even sure you will have space but you are coming anyway are you seeing how this thing works you come anyway and you sit down and to your greatest shock it was never for you to meet me while the praise and worship is on fire lands on your situation and all of a sudden you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it after or whatever program you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying sir remember we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work I, my spirit was moving me and you say god this is you let me show you how breakthrough happens breakthrough is worked is like the working of miracles you know how you cook food you don't drop onions
pepper, fish, whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say, food, cook. No, you walk it. How do you walk it? You get a pot, firewood or whatever you are using. You start engaging. Sometimes it will be painful. As you are cutting something, knife can cut you. But you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain. It's by eating the food, the pain will be healed. So continue. And at the end of it, you have a lovely meal. And everybody who comes around wonders. Brothers and sisters, it is true that God gave grace, but you walked it. Are we together? This part of engaging the word is what I want. I want to drum it into our spirits. Nothing will change in your life just because you are a Christian. The word of God must be engaged. Hallelujah. Mm. Sacrifices, praise, several things. You must engage the word of God. There are some of us here, you have never sown a seed. I'm not saying to me, please don't get what I'm saying. But you have never, most of us is 95% receiving, 5% giving. You will be broke forever. That's the equation of poor people. Are we together? Yes. Give me. Your own is to collect. Lord, who is going to give me? And the Lord says, when are you going to create your own harvest? Have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain, if you use a spoon to, spend, to send vapor to the air, you will spend your whole life. There are other people who don't allow challenges to last. They walk it till it gives up. They walk it till it gives up. I believe in results. I am motivated by results. I'm very, very outspoken about results. I'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter. It matters, sir. Results matter. Human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces is that true yes when a woman gets pregnant we're happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end is that true yes when somebody like the people sharing now the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through you know now the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that when you do things the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results this is what i want to cancel from our life hallelujah breakthroughs are predictable hmm. the help of god is predictable the mercy of god is predictable results are predictable please my brother my sister let me beg us in the name of jesus to not sit down and hope things change i'm delivering you from it because after 10 years it will remain like that until it changes there are people who as of january this year wrote down a list of certain things they submitted it and asked questions lord how do i engage with you and right now God has ticked those things with results. There are others, all they do, every miracle service is, God arise for me, they drop it. Every instruction God gave from January till now, they have not done one. Lift up your hands, they won't lift up. Pray, they won't pray. Celebrate God, dance around you know, all these things. How can I be a, a child? We left these things, am I in a party? See that? I told you about dancing i don't like dancing it's not anything i admire at all but it's a it's a key you know how drugs are how you swallow drugs sometimes when you swallow drugs especially maybe a syrup it can be so bitter especially when you are giving children they are trying to deny but your love keeps them there swallow it when they swallow it you pamper them later on swallow it do you pity the child oh yeah i'll leave you like that no that's how it is when you are obeying god don't pity yourself oh no sir don't pity yourself abraham carried isaac and said up we go when he kept looking at isaac i love you but this one see 
be careful some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level you are emotionally connected to your money you are emotionally connected to your title you are emotionally connected to whatever that's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high you are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry the word of god works it is reliable this is how god has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today and this is how he will help us to rise but the key is that we engage the word the key is that we engage the word we don't sit down and make god responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves that's not faith no that's not faith you must take inventory of your life you'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night i just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit god is my witness whom i serve that i am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results see let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are the only one rising you are you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself I'm hearing a song in my spirit. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to become a public speaker. You dropped it here. You have not engaged the word. You found a scripture, but you have not done anything with it. Lord, I want to become a man of God. And the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church. You know, sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days, the tree will not fall. Hallelujah. Don't jump into things. Take out quality time to engage this thing. Engage this thing. God is calling, let me use you promise, come. God is calling promise into ministry, for instance. Go and start a ministry in Delta or start a ministry in U.S., and then the only thing he does is just says wow i i have learned enough you just jump and go to delta and after five years you are still roaming around as if god didn't call you in that five years those who engage the world are swimming in grace whereas you are there frustrating the grace of god after 10 years you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police they say your age has passed you now say you want to join something else and your life and you blame god and god says no you refuse to engage the word i told you time never changes anything it only reveals time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time but god calls this guy now and he sits down lord what kind of ministry are you giving me Oh, this is this and he's studying he's learning he's building 
how do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people he's learning how do we build membership when members cross 500 how do you manage them you are learning how do i grow in the anointing when i have three to five sermons to preach every week how do i manage it with my family life what if i have a business running how do i manage it this gentleman works on himself i tell you he gets up and in one year start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there everything done whereas another person is struggling and angry now this is anger is usually a product of frustration when you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless you see one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you when you execute your plans effortlessly how are you doing it and people begin to coin explanations I don't want to live a life of a failure I don't want to number one it does not glorify God number two is going to waste my time number three there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces one of my greatest fears if I have any is to walk and to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things are believed are a lie that's why i'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs lord what i believe about finances is it accurate what i believe about the anointing is it accurate what i believe about fasting and prayer is it accurate i'm not ashamed though if at any point i find out there is a problem i'm not ashamed I, okay lord let's look at this this is what i used to believe but now i'm seeing i'm learning this wow amazing I'm growing and you are just let me tell you something there are many anointings to lift our family members but it is at the mercy of their engaging they only complain and insult they insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough and they sit down and hope and wish they will learn you will be surprised and i don't mean to be sarcastic you'll be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what god is doing it will be shocking and surprising are you hearing what i'm saying now the trouble is you are the one who is the patient who cries the patient or the hospital please talk to me when the patient insults the hospital does the hospital have tears the hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready is that true lord i don't want to live my life as a failure results can be commanded this thing has been done before i'm not asking you where you grew up whether it's in your village or whatever i'm not asking what has happened in your life brothers and sisters this anointing we talk about is god's own ability but are we willing to engage it to produce the required result do it honorably and fail and the lord will do for you what he did for peter he held his hand and lifted him this is how god brought some of us my brother my sister it's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and say start ministry if you need money we'll support you start ministry if you need members no 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 engaging by faith when people see the results they trivialize it sometimes people just talk all kinds of things but then they do not know that these things were engaged access is not enough the word the truth the mystery the principle the revelation must be engaged it must be engaged it must be engaged there is a part you have to play play it and watch god watch god arise for you as a mighty god and turn things around for you hallelujah do you believe what i'm sharing with you this thing does not take time it just takes commitment if i'm building a house 
listen and i have workers building a house for me and they are working they start working by six and by night there are those who do night shift and are working is that true and there is another lazy builder the workers come by 10 they close by two whose house will be built first you see that now the amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you there is no way around it i watch our fathers of faith and i'm surprised that with the kind of results they command you still see them engaging this thing they are working it with all their heart i was watching a video by dr paul Enenche, and um, i'm saying this only because he said it he was preaching this year at um bill winston's ministry and the lord's garden the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in abuja and he said just for the the zinc alone just to cover that place they are spending 16 million us dollars zinc not building 16 million us dollars in a time of recession debt free now only a fool and a stupid person 16 million dollars will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10 and this is what is used for zinking so a wise person says this is the result i'm looking for it is on earth already happening in someone's life so what do you do you follow them who through faith and patience what did he engage because he was not born like that as at 1999, God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche, was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden, rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer that nothing will ever change just like that hallelujah what are you doing in partnership with the word of god do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome do you understand then if yes are you engaging completely The future will show the mysteries and the things that koinonia is engaging is it's not it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now but the future will tell what is being engaged today you see that something i do not know is responsible for where i am something i know but have not believed is also responsible for where i am something i have believed but i've not acted upon consistently is responsible for where i am while you are seated can you pray cry to god and say lord i repent i've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you but now i have heard you i have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself are you praying some of you are looking at others. Forget about them and cry for your destiny. Apostle, I graduated since five years ago. Nothing has happened in my life. Show me what you are engaging first. Let me see what you have done. I thought I would have a job. Who told you you will have a job? Just like that? Show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging. keep praying show me what you are engaging apostle i expected that by now i should not be begging for food to feed my family show me what you are engaging or are you just waiting for things to happen show me apostle i expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially show me what you are engaging let me see it Apostle, I expected that by now I should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic. 
certain levels of the anointing show me what you are engaging sir i expect that i should be established by now i should have had a car and a house show me what you are engaging don't just wish for nothing i've been coming to church that's not enough what have you engaged pray nothing will ever change my brother my sister access to truth is not enough it must be engaged though access to truth is not enough apostle i've listened to all your messages on favor wonderful have you done what was said in the message consistently have you done what was said in the message having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete let's not turn god to a game player playing pranks and 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 expect strange results pray you don't commit 30 minutes to god 30 minutes of your life the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which god are we talking about here prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the world show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time i stand here most times i'm waiting on god is when i go back that i eat something there are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as i stand i'm not saying that's what you must do after service you see me stand here to see people sometimes past 12 last week i went home to one don't want crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there are we together now we want things without the responsibility attached to it you before you barely rest someone has woken you there is a challenge you when i came you saw me talking on phone and i called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere the people don't care that there is service listen let me tell you for every dimension there is a price i i wish I don't know how to make you believe this thing if you are unwilling to pay the price please forget about the dimension there are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life the moment certain things are not done it will destroy you it's better for it to have not come believe what i'm telling you jonah 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 entered a boat and people they started losing things and when they were checking they said what is making this boat heavy jonah said i'm the one who if i were not anointed i would have slept quietly but because of what i carried you are suffering for something now there are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices oh god open my eyes are you ready to pray for everything you see because you will see things that will disturb you you are about to rest and you see a plane crash you are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody and if it happens that way god will call you and say if your eyes were closed you are free 
but hence you cried and said open my eyes it's not about prophesying you no know, there is a responsibility oh god make me rich let me be your distributor and god stands and says as you are leaving your house now carry fifty thousand. my people are in need of it yes sir ha. oh god you said you want to be my steward oh yeah carry it and somebody comes and while you're talking says give five thousand to sam there are two little children give all of them one one thousand and you are acting like a fool and god says that's how my distribution system works the day you are not interested i close the heavens as simple as that i see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months your offering is 10 naira or one year 10 years you drink is five for life how much is five for life and then you squeeze as an adult working class you come to church with 10 20 naira and drop it and say but what are these young people doing are you joking brothers and sisters let me submit to you if you ever try to sow seeds like me it may kill you in one month i'm telling you this sincerely lord make me a millionaire he says are you ready to sponsor 70 children he said no no i don't want that oh god you gave me only two he says that's it whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah amen hallelujah thine the glory revive us is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a give me an international anointing. Okay, do you have the grace to counsel to preach three five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. Less than 15% for myself. Father, bless your people. Change their story. A text message comes sometimes you don't see me reply your text message it doesn't mean i don't pray over it do you have the sacrifice can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them everything and then they don't tell you thank you and god said it's none of your business leave the issue is between me and you please listen to me oh these are the engagings it's not just about honor it's not just about sitting i'm ready to be a man of god are you ready for the criticism everything about your life is an open book everybody criticizes everything can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound and get up in the morning some of you who are so sensitive i think you stole my phone how can i be the thief and you are moving around and you want to do ministry you must be broken and you must be walked on by God. Is God speaking to us? This teaching is very sincere. Most of us see blessed people and just admire them. And I look at the greed that is in many people's lives. Greed. You can sit down. Somebody is saying, I've not eaten. There is 1,000 naira in your pocket. You say, go and meet apostles. And meet apostle he, 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 he likes giving just talk to him and he will give you and this is the person holding 1000 naira and you are saying oh god when will you visit me? and god even scholarship you will not see for where are we together this is how this thing works so send 200 naira recharge card to your mother you rejected it Whereas somebody transferred 1,000 to you and God says, take 200. He says, how many? And it's not like there is an important discussion and God says, I'm watching your heart. You are not engaging this thing. Let me show us why we are really not getting results. Let's be honest with ourselves. Am I engaging the word? Cain got angry 
because of abel's result and god said no no this is not about abel if you do what abel did to the latter will you not get his result hear me it doesn't cost god to raise help for you there is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed there is something a man of god is not doing that's why his ministry is not growing there is something a father a mother a brother a sister is not doing that's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury every guy that comes to me leaves in two weeks five guys have come sister calm down could there be that there's something you are no 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 there's nothing wrong with me i just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys five of them stupid that means something in you is attracting them because you draw your kind to yourself the body of christ likes passing blames we blame witches we blame pastors we blame government we blame our parents let me tell you your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down. i'm surprised seeing many gentlemen their lives are not moving they are not doing anything after koinonia you're just looking at any sister who can i now marry you this one that time is going and there's nothing happening you see what we're saying A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your bible and a tape recorder Jakatokata. lord it can't be this way the word of god is coming every day why is my life like this i am 31 i am 35 i am 40 i'm seated i can i have to beg for gary lord i love you something is wrong and all of a sudden you come there your friend is calling say leave me alone no, you better leave me alone say is this your did you renew your dstv say don't near my house you have been deceiving me for many years and you sit down and all of a sudden the word of the lord comes this sitting down is what we don't do we stand up moving around this hustling life pillar to post one thing is needful sit down first stand up as instructed don't move around just like that he, he, see the labor of the fool the engaging of a fool weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city not every action is profitable it is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding apostle i'm anointed i'm surprised i organize a meeting and nobody comes there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face lift your voice and pray lord i know you are ever faithful pray i take responsibility tonight there is something i am not engaging adequately Zekete koto soto kata prakatash, lekete broske sekete mara kato sebiada. Hela masena na malena mashe ana na 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 na. hallelujah please sit down the lord has brought before us several keys mysteries secrets 
that are responsible for certain outcomes brothers and sisters is up to us there are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy to engage it then they enjoy the benefit you cannot sit down and be dependent forever our little children should be the ones waiting but an adult oh you know that thing they say in house Ale Baka Musamu. so while you are engaging i'm resting after all you'll be too kind to leave me like that nah. the bible says right from the days of john the baptist even until now the kingdom suffered violence and the violent would take it by force someone who will say no way lord i will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i'm no one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life we are learning i've shared with you there are some of us the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore god i've shared these principles you don't ignore god and prosper sir okay um i'm a businessman me i'm not into ministry ignore god and see ignore god and watch the devil rubbish your life many business people don't honor god they honor business they honor men but they don't honor god in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path how many people start walking and they they don't have time for god time for the house of god no time for the things of god i'm a bit busy lord you know that i'm, I'm engaged and god says hey you are engaged and then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work one sickness arises and just destroys you somebody in your office looks at you and says let me see how you will rise to the next level and that's it is they that know their god that shall be strong and do exploits to the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about god you must know god hallelujah i've said it humorously only God can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars. Only God knows the people who project me as I sleep to make sure I don't wake up. This man you see is here for a long time. Very long time. Is that true? some of us have refused we have been drumming mental development and we have refused so we are mediocre where we are it's amazing how when the word of god comes people exempt themselves say this part is not for me this is the part for me no all scripture was inspired how many all scripture god can be talking about mental development and you can say me for me i'm a man of prayer and fasting leave that one for um, um mental development all those who want to become professors and lecturers for me this is a vineyard and you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong regardless of your results L listen being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you because it will bring about familiarity you are familiar with every man of god every program everything yet it will not bless you those that were close to jesus ran away they were not getting anything nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life mental development mental development upgrading your mind expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify christ how about people who do not understand authority this is the mystery they have not engaged 
and that's why the devil whips them left right and center left right and center they have no honor no regard for anybody on earth some of our parents are like that like that just say, hey, so so man has come to town which man so why are people going to go and see him what's the spell you see, you see and, and they start debating it and the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering he does not know that it is for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep he sits down there and a miracle is close to him sometimes in his neighborhood and he hears Reinhard Bonke preaching and laughs he said ah is that the wise man you are talking about what is this one he says they said Baba is about to pray for the city well, no, no, mind those people and his kind of case is what is being called and they are being healed and Reinhard Bonke will go back and the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there look the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of God cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance look at students here you heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week no school fees no nothing and the result comes out and you are graduated Haba. <laughs> There are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do. We are born again, but everything is mediocre. Everything. Everything. Average mediocre. Local champions. I'm a tailor. Like who? Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm patching here and there. I, Lord, I need increase. And God says, increase your capacity. Be excellent. Be excellent. So that you can now start making clothes. When you make a millionaire's clothes, you get a millionaire's reward. When you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today, 200 tomorrow, 800 today to pay 3,000. And you are arguing and, see, arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person. But you still suffer. You get tired and say, Lord, I've started. I've left this level. I've challenged us towards being excellent. Hallelujah excellent some of us relationships this is the mystery we are not engaging we know it but we are not engaging it hallelujah relationships honorable is here um I, I don't mean to embarrass him but this man of god that you see forget that he's a politician i told you politicians are my friends i'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens I'm not one of these, these foolish people that throw away politicians away. They are my friends. Oh. They are my friends. They are my friends. Yes. They are my friends. Hallelujah. Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah. The first thing she did was to marry the king. To make sure she was at the seat of governance. Then she now push Ahab say, oh yeah, wait, I'm the one in charge. See that? A true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of God even at the level of governance. I went for Mubi Crusade. An honorable is here. Do you know, brothers and sisters, this man as great as he is with his status, and all of this he came for the crusade with his wife stayed like two days together and returned back when I go to Yola sometimes with his own car carries me in his own Jeep and drives around praise the Lord relationship if he calls me and says his wife is having a headache and you call me There, there were calls but let me show you how i will respond relationship that's what brought docas back to life when docas died she was a woman who while she said i can't preach but i can sew madam you are cold let me make sweater for you when she died the widow said no way 
These wicked men, they are all preachers, but they don't take care of us. You better raise this woman back to life for our sake. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know. Are we together? Yes. Relationships. I told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationship. Everything money can pay for, relationships can pay for it. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. There are things relationships should pay for. You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel, she knew it was a strange thing. She had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her. To be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their babies left when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was working with jesus but offense came in because some of Jesus' disciples left and became his disciple. And he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance. He went and started lambasting Herod. Because he did not know the protocol of the palace. He thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness. The way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace. There are principles, all preachers, that rubbish themselves in high places. And they call it speaking for Christ. There is the wisdom and intelligence. When Paul was in the Jerusalem council with the Sanhedrin, he spoke as a Pharisee. He said, look, 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 look. I can speak as this and that, but look, now, there are Pharisees, Sadducees. Let me bring a point of divide. I'm speaking based on my authority. I'm a Pharisee. Spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire. Relationships many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age is that true they didn't raise anybody they didn't lift anybody all their friends are successful people they watch television and tell you this guy was my friend do you know that uh, general buhari was my classmate do you know this one was my classmate do you know that kofi Annan we drank tea together oh god why have you not been there? what has that relationship done for you this is why when we do things in church like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning the this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future you will see the person you frowned at in power and glory and now you will not have the same access again it is cheaper now than later you've heard me say we will all be great but the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. That's the most important part. So that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. Hardship. Because there is no relationship. As a ministry by the grace of God. God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges. With people, with institutions. Because of relationships what have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things I respect a lot about my dad. 
my dad understands relationships in a strange way he knows almost anybody everywhere if he's a policeman he will scroll down there has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before if it is prisons if it is customs if he's a carpenter even if he's a truck he does not have that stops he knows a mechanic somewhere he knows the one that fixes Peugeot he knows the ones that fixes these relationships now it's costly that's a very busy life but it's only busy until the day you need those people one call and they tell someone else yes sir but another you keep knocking forever and you say God help me God I helped you since you misuse the opportunity hallelujah praise the lord what have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them how long will you continue hating people and talking about them as though you are going to live in this world alone how long are you ready to continue holding grudges when will you forbear and excel there are ladies over my dead body my mother I will never talk to her but the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman justified she did something wrong but can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension hallelujah i am passionate about engaging the word i am passionate i studied the life of Job because i want to be very prosperous and i studied his life I saw things that Job did that if Job died poor God would have been a wicked person I found treasures I said ah this is what Job did not the obvious things we see there were things that Job did what are you doing some of us these are little children they never look at you and smile they look at you and they are afraid you call them children remember you are not going to die young you have received the anointing for long life the children you laugh at today you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years they will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence and you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children is god giving us wisdom this, these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems these are success systems I'm, I'm challenging us this engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about engage the word engage the word engage the mysteries you know and stay there stay there till it produces don't engage once and complain do you know there was a time in my life i did everything but there was no result everything to be done i cross checked and it was correct once you have done everything leave god's part to him so when people are complaining and say apostle what am i missing i say you are not missing anything just stay there just like that yes sir stay there god is watching your growth and he knows that if those blessings come you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet so he keeps you and then overnight you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing and they say where did he come from he's always been there waiting i've been sowing seeds continue says not to be weary in well-doing for we will reap in due season there is a due season if you fail not if you fail the due season will come and pass and you will not see anything i will never stop sowing seeds i will sow like a madman until the day the harvest comes i will never stop engaging my passion for god i will never stop building capacity i will respect every man of god and every authority that is producing the results that i'm not producing never will i open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that i'm not producing it's pride of the highest order no matter how simple and how cheap they sound they are engaging something that is producing my results i have a meeting next year and god has granted me the privilege 
and I'll have the privilege to be meeting with, I think maybe for the first time in my life, one of the billionaires in the world, a Nigerian. I look forward to that meeting. I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam. He said, ah, ah, Apostle, for what? This dishonor we carry is why we never rise. If I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes, I will go down my knees and say, thank you, sir. Because it will change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels. I look forward to that meeting. I've been praying and fasting about it. I say, Lord, this meeting cannot be once. We have to be friends. We have to be what? Yes. Because a friend sticks close to, than a brother. This brother, sister, thing, friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Have you not seen the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this? So you can serve God. Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. I want, they are, for as long as they are working in the farms, for as long as they are suffering in Egypt, they can't serve me. Say, let my people go so that they will do what? It is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now. That when others get up in the morning and are running helter skelter, you are there with your family. You made a way. That's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over, you made a way. And visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom we have allocated 10 million to this ministry there is a mission agency we heard that these people are passionate about souls and they say are you a pastor he said no i'm just a brother in church i have been trained that my entire life is about a, the kingdom he said are you you, meet, you better stand up and make ends meet and luther continue i said no not in this house we have demarcated this house through understanding exempted forever from certain things Someone comes to your house and say, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no. Priesthood. Our house. We have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 no. God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money. Then serving God small on the way is a cost. Did you hear what I said? It's a cost. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy put his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, but he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor. But I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. 
hallelujah one day you get up and carry your family where are you going to we are going for a hillsong conference in australia you mean it yes yes sir we are going there and we are sitting down he said you mean this is how your whole life he said this is how it is so i don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way because you are my god men may not believe it they think we are jokers but you are my god you are you are you are you are you are my god romans chapter 8 and verse 18 let me round up it says for i record that the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters i am not unaware of the pain you are going through i'm not a fool i know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my bible greater than any constitution of any republic the bible says for i know i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the endless expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and God says you are the one I'm raising on I'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen God is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek God as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek god church services every day every day not just on sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy bowing down to the status of nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality god wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray lord i exempt myself i exempt myself Shaka -taka -taka -ta. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. I exempt myself. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a generation that will serve God. There is a generation that will seek the God of Jacob. Not seeking money. Not seeking power. We will conquer wealth. We will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom in improving the living of men pray
listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of god they are so blessed they don't discuss money again hallelujah i heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because i read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than hundred times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of god get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow god calls you say sorry god i have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice and pray engaging the systems of the kingdom not only believing them not only having access to them hallelujah hallelujah i like you to lift your voice and cry that the spirit of disobedience the spirit of spiritual laziness that does not allow you engage the world you just keep wishing no no sir no ma lift your voice and pray lord the grace to put the word to work lord i confess i've not been a faithful tighter pray i i stop playing games with my destiny tonight lord i confess my prayer life has gone down my word life has gone down lord i confess i'm not serious with my destiny as a gentleman god has called me into ministry but i'm not giving it the attention it requires they're admiring people fighting people gossiping and trying to make a name for myself i settle down with destiny 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 hallelujah listen let me give you a little assignment when you go back home tonight i want you to write specific goals things you are doing this issue of doing everything <laughs> i'm on a mission to rising financially i'm on a mission to knowing god i'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing don't just study randomly and move. no write things the lord is calling me into ministry and he told me the ministry is starting february next year but from now till february i am engaging this i need to know the mystery behind speed i need to know what keeps members you write it and sit down 
I've, I've not been faithful in tithing. That means I've not had a revelation about it. The issue is not just to carry money and start running. The issue is to sit down and say, this month, I'm going to take a course. I'm going to take a study on it. Who has written books in this area? And you sit down. Who has done a very comprehensive, balanced, not hungry, manipulative teaching on it? And you study. That's how you grow. You carry your issue of concern, put it before you. Close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles. Don't leave it. That's how winners work. But all this one of try today, if it's too hard, you turn this direction, you will still meet it there. Stay there and win. Did you hear what I said? Stay there and win. Let me tell you in my little life, I can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable. It's a lie. Don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend. Don't go near them again. I want you to write a list of the mountains before you. Pray, dance, but sit down. There's got to be a way. There's got to be a way. You read a book. You check something. There's got to be a way. Then you enjoy the beauty of triumph. Brothers and sisters, triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges. You live as if Satan does not exist. There is such a realm. It is my desire with all my heart, among other things that God will bring, not just this ministry, he has helped in a measure, not just me, but every one of us, not just to a level of spiritual awakening. I, I'm trusting God for an avalanche of, do you know how you conquer poverty? Like, you put it under your feet. This is what God would do in this ministry and with people. And you watch people serve God. All this obsession for money that runs people to hell. Ladies marrying for money. Brothers doing this. People leaving God for money. All kinds of nonsense. And we can focus on God. Then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek God for him. Not for what he can bring. There will be men and women who can study. There are some of you, there are books locked up in your spirit for nations. But suffering will not let those books come out. Because all you are thinking now is, oh God, let me just look for something to eat. We depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death. Whereas there is a way, a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again are we together the last prayer point and we're done for this night i like you to cry and say god hold my hands and insist that I don't stop until I get to the best, the place of destiny. Hold my hands. I ask you to. He held the hands of Peter. Some of you in your in your in your in your quest to obey God, you have seen things most dive in your life. Cry and say, Lord, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands, oh God. Stop me from sinking and lift me up. Use my life as a spectacle to show what you can do with the anointing. To show what you can do with influence. To show what you can do with men and women who are passionate about agenda. I will search for you and I will find you. I will find you with all my heart. I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my I'm leading a generation to seek him Lord we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship listen rounding up before i make the altar call listen to me i want to encourage hold on guys i want to encourage every brother here you're a brother when you go back home this night 
please please do this go and get a notebook sit down use this weekend please thank god there, there's there's holiday today tomorrow sunday even if it's one hour please just do what i'm asking you to do find somewhere alone everybody say alone not with your neighbor not group find somewhere alone whether it's one forest somewhere or outside near one tree one dam somewhere and just sit down with a notebook and a paper don't carry any book just go and stay there and say holy spirit i'm rededicating my destiny not my life to you you are the only one who can help me this ministry you are giving me this business this life this family is too much for me i am ready to receive your wisdom and you it will shock you what god will do for you in that retreat don't do it sitting in your room or your parlor no 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 find a place go somewhere if you see someone there find another corner somewhere one grass somewhere one uncompleted building of a school somewhere just hang around somewhere even if it's for one hour take a time of inventory the way i'm living my life am i going to make it are we together this is called self-supervision sit down the way i'm running my family are we going to rise this way the way i'm living my life am i going to be great this way the the time i am giving god will this time really birth his glory in me and then come up by the spirit with resolutions the lord will show you areas the lord will show you things ladies you can do it too i'm not saying it's, it's just for guys and then ladies lazy around this is everybody's destiny carry a notebook flog it out somewhere let me tell you the second thing i want you to do please hear me and don't be offended with what i'm telling you you have to search for the names and numbers of certain people and delete them out of your phone i repeat you have to search for the names comma and the numbers of certain people and do what delete them out of your phone i promise you being a friend of everybody will not give you your destiny are we together there are people who are not bad they are not demonic but they are too distracting to accommodate them their, their, their distraction to your destiny is not worth it. Let them be. The day you rise, you can always recall them. But for now, you are on a project. Some of you may need to trust God to get a place, whether off you or get a small room with somebody. You, you just need to pay whatever price it will take to allow you to build this great destiny. Are we together? yes some of you may need to minimize certain useless visitations visitations that don't make sense from pillar to post flying around no some of you may need to minimize movies i'm not saying movies are wrong don't don't misunderstand me but let me tell you you are not going to spend your whole life watching movies and you make it in life no sir is that true some of us may need to minimize sleep 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 snore your way time is going but this is bible say a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the and poverty comes upon you like an armed bandit some of us may need to minimize food please i'm not saying starve yourself don't get me wrong but i'm telling you gluttony is killing some of us killing some of us some of us need to reduce your three phones to one the two are not doing anything they are distracting you distracting you some of you need to reduce the number of social media platforms except you are there maybe on business or something you are on every social media platform your phone is beeping per second per second some of us may need to off our phones that's what you need for that one two hours off it there is nothing that is too urgent off it and spend time with god These are the things that distract people who have potentials of greatness. The Holy Spirit wants to make greatness out of people. But we keep getting distracted. If you can pay this price, I praise you. You may not like me now for what I'm telling you. 
but tomorrow you will see me and say thank you sir the person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth no matter how uncomfortable i love you too much to leave you the way you are there is a level of anointing you must enter there is a level of influence you must enter i want god to do business with you that he you will rise to become a voice for his majesty this is what he's looking for father we give you the glory tonight you have challenged us tonight this is more than a sermon this is the heart of god pounding on your destiny the lord is challenging us very truthfully and seriously tonight there are ladies and gentlemen men and women standing here whilst you heard me teach the holy ghost began to speak to you that you need to correct your life and run to jesus now please everyone keep standing no movement there are people in this place tonight that are saying lord i need to run to you perhaps you're coming here for the first time and you have always laughed at men of god every time they made altar calls the lord is speaking to you that tonight is your own turn or at one point you have given your heart to the lord but things just went haywire your life scattered and you joined it and just you know destroyed the path of glory that you were following followed friends followed every kind of thing made a mess of your life and you are saying man of god can he receive me back absolutely and tonight wherever you are our time is gone i want you to take a bold and a serious step a bold and it must be serious you must come here meaning it from your heart wherever you are inside outside please i'd like you to make that bold step right now and come up even as we appreciate them quickly quickly lord i'm tired of playing games with my life you're welcome quickly let's clear the way for them as they are coming please encourage them encourage them apostle i've always been a nice guy it's just that i can't remember making this altar call join them join them i'm not sure my father is a pastor i've grown in a pastor's house join them join them please join them whether I overflow one two three wherever you are join them god bless you apostle i don't want people to see me forget about that please join them and come join them quickly keep coming above him there's no other jesus is way jesus is the answer for the world today please allow them come if they are coming keep coming above him there's no other if you are still joining them please rush and come those of you who are here i truly congratulate you with all my heart i know that you are standing here some of you are handing your life over to jesus for the first time some of you are rededicating your life it doesn't matter let me tell you jesus is not a religion jesus is not an opinion he is life he will truly give you a new beginning hallelujah now lift your right hand and say after me very clearly say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart i come before you tonight just as i am i ask you to forgive me to cleanse me to give me a new beginning i declare that you are lord of my life you are my savior you are my king i receive eternal life tonight into my spirit and i declare that from tonight i'm a child of god i am saved i'm delivered in the name of jesus Keep your hands lifted lord jesus who but you is able to save men who but you is able to show mercy and grace lord i decree and declare that these ones who have come unashamedly standing before you and standing before your people let this be a new beginning for them in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the power of satan sin hell the grave is broken over your life 
I decree and declare that the grace to live a victorious life, the hunger for God and for the things of God is planted in your heart tonight. From today, you will go higher and higher and higher in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare that the Lord himself will bless and honor and lift you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, um, please, all of you, I want you to follow. There is a gentleman that will be waving. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kata Branda Kata Bakotos Koto Breka Tekanekata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.